Hello there and welcome to my channel Pixelology. My name is Sophia and the topics I'll talk about don't always necessitate you being or wanting to be a professional photographer. I want to explain photography and the photography theory to everyone who is interested, no matter if you are in front of the camera, someone who just dabbles in photography or already has experience. Okay then, so what are we going to look at today? I will give you some tips and tricks that can make you hopefully a better photographer. To get to the bottom of this, we will try and answer the following questions. First, what distinguishes the hobby photographer from the experienced one? And second, what can I do to make my images look even better right now without having any training at all? Well then, let me start by saying that whether your pictures look good or not, or if you have talent or not, is extremely subjective and can be heavily influenced by the viewer's knowledge. Someone who is into photography has very different demands on and expectations of a photograph than someone who is not really up to date on the do's and don'ts of photography. Everyone has a different idea of what is aesthetically pleasing and what is not. We all strive to improve and evolve. I hope that the following points will help you a little bit in this goal. Please mind that I am only going to touch on each topic today, as I will be addressing them in greater detail in further videos. So. Where do I see the potential for fast improvement of images that will make you even better a photographer? First up, let's have a look at the posing. A photographer often hears the sentence, I want to look natural, I don't like posing very much. The unexperienced photographer then usually takes this too literally and reduces his actions only to pressing the shutter release. However, the experienced photographer will give his models helpful tips and advice before the shoot so that natural poses can still look good. Many gestures and postures are simply not suitable for a photograph. Let's have a look at some typical examples. Often people tend to raise their shoulders, for example, when leaning against the wall, as seen in this picture here. This can easily be corrected by consciously relaxing that arm and shoulder. Another perfect example is the hunched back when leaning on our knees. It is extremely unflattering, can even add some imaginary pounds. Try and remember to keep your back straight. Another example we tend to overlook is that our skin is very flexible. Thus, we can shift our faces when leaning on one hand, for example. Tell your models to lightly tap the skin or just don't lean fully into the hand. What a difference some simple changes can make, right? Next up, let's look at cropping. Before we continue, if you like my content, please consider subscribing to my channel and leaving a like. It doesn't cost you a thing, but helps me tremendously with the YouTube algorithm. I really appreciate you taking the time. Now back to the video. Some crops are considered more aesthetically pleasing than others. Also the impact of the image can change dramatically just by cropping the image in a different way, especially when I'm taking a macro image of the head for example. It can often come to unsightly decapitations. It is always better to either zoom in really close or to choose a different crop entirely. Let's have a look at an example, shall we? As you can see, the picture looks kind of strange. No neck is visible, no real jawline and no hairline either. It just doesn't work. But what happens when we crop in a little more? Can you see the difference? It immediately looks more wholesome, doesn't it? Instead of zooming in, you can also zoom out a little more, 
to incorporate more of the body into the picture. Both images work. What do you think? What many photographers unfortunately forget sometimes, especially if they have focused on the model before them so much, is the environment. A scene can be so beautiful if the ambience weren't disturbed by a trash can or other things not necessary to the picture itself. Let's have a look at this table for example. It's a beautiful celebratory setting, if it weren't for the beer bottles. This picture on the other hand feels the same way but much warmer as nothing distracts from the focus of the image. So. Always keep an eye out for the stray trash can wiggling their way into your photograph when taking a picture of your partner. Sometimes, however, it is also due to the wrong camera setting that a photograph simply doesn't want to succeed. I'm not talking about obvious underexposed or overexposed images, but images where you can't tell what the actual focus of the image was. Let's take a look at these, for example. In these pictures, so much is going on that you can easily lose sight of what the photographer actually wanted to take a picture of. Try and find contrast to highlight what you want people to focus on. Or you can play with depth of field, or blur, or background, or even use natural flames to guide the viewer's eye. Speaking of image focus, the purpose of the image is also crucial to successful pictures. Always ask yourself the questions, why did I even take the picture? Is something happening? Is it triggering an emotion? Is there a foreground, middle ground and background? What am I doing with this image or is it just a waste of storage space? Let's ask ourselves these questions with the following image. What does this image tell you? It tells me that it's evening. Is something happening? Does it trigger an emotion? No, not really. Is there a four, middle and background? Well, nothing particularly happens at all, actually. Then why even take this picture? Maybe the photographer wanted to tell a loved one where he is at on his way home. So nothing special is happening, nor does it have a reuse purpose. Judgment? After the picture served its purpose, it will most likely be deleted. The last point goes somewhat hand in hand with the issue of image cropping. We are talking about empty space here. Just as every square inch of an apartment doesn't have to be cramped with odds and ends, the same is true in photography. Deliberately leaving empty space can be a nice design element, but it can also rather quickly look weird. Let's have a look at some examples. Can you see any reason why the bride has been cropped at her stomach? Do you also feel the itch to crop the image right away? There is no real purpose to the space above her, it seems. She doesn't even look up. This couple, on the other hand, is also only occupying a third of the image, but it doesn't feel wrong, as it lets the image breathe somehow. Always consider where people look to and all the other elements of the image. They will guide you like the woman's shawl in this image. Choosing the right crop requires some intuition and sometimes a knowledge of the intended use especially in stock photography. It is often important to consciously leave space for texts and product placements. So, what can you already do today to improve your images? The next time you pull out your camera, take a close look at the area you want to photograph. What do you notice? What is unnecessary or too distracting? Can it be easily removed or hidden? What do you not want to see in a picture? Let's test this out. What obvious things do you notice in this image? 
And did you notice the same things I did? Did you notice anything else that was different? Let's look at another example. If you missed something, don't worry. From now on, you will certainly be more attentive. As an exercise, you can also look at old photos of yours and critically examine them. What would you do differently or better today? I hope you were able to take something away from today's topic. Everything I've talked or am going to be talking about in the future, I either learned in training, from experience, from the experience of other people or simply research. If you don't agree with my point of view, please feel free to do your own research on the matter concerned. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Until then, stay safe. Bye.